Okay, so now that we know that the transistor can be represented into both resistance and capacitor, now look, let's look at the equivalent RC circuit in two inverters which are connected back to back as shown in figure A. Okay, so what it says here that figure 4.5 shows the equivalent RC models for NMOS and PMOS transistors of with K with contacted diffusion on both source and drain. The PMOS transistor approximately has twice the resistance of the NMOS transistor because the whole both have lower mobility than electrons. So if we write that equation, mu n equals to 2 mu p. The PMOS capacitors are shown with VDD as their second terminal because the N well is usually tied to high. Okay, so let's look at um, let's look at the circuit. So let's see here. Um, this is the first inverter and this is the first equivalent circuit model. Right, as you can see here, the transistor here is represented by R and 2C. So the uh, capacitance at the source of the P is connected to capacitor which is also connected to VDD. And since this point, this VDD, is connected to both ends of the node, so this one can be negligible. Next, you can see here is the capacitance which is connected to the drain, right? And the size is 2C because the width of the PMOS is double the width of um, the NMOS. And this is related to mu n equals to 2 mu p. Okay, so next is the capacitor. Um, the capacitor at the drain of the NMOS transistor. Um, this one is connected to ground because it's NMOS. And uh, it's only C because the WN is only 1. And the R is also 1. And now the capacitor at the source is connected to ground and since because this node is connected to ground and this node is connected to ground so the capacitor is shorted so it is left with um, only one C this capacitor at the bottom is negligible okay so what about the capacitance at the gate why are we not considering this we are considering only the capacitance at the load because we want to know the delay at the output. Alright, and this one here is the second inverter. The second inverter, um, we want to represent the second inverter uh, also using capacitor. And why are we not considering the resistance? Because we are not looking at the resistance but we are only looking at the capacitive load okay so this capacitor at the PMOS is 2C and the capacitor at the NMOS is a single T now we want to simplify here so if we are at uh, the input so let's say when the transistor or the inverter is pulled down to zero when it's pulled down to zero how is it pulled down to zero it is pulled down to zero when the input a is high right a input a is high it goes through the to the first transistor which has r of one and it will go through the uh, output load and the output load here we can combine so you can see here how many how many capacitance we have. We have this 2C. This is 3, 4, 5, and 6. So why do we combine all of them? It is because in the AC signal, the VDD and ground is considered as a single node. So DC in DC, ground and VDD 
uh, separate but in AC ground and VDD are equal okay so when you combine all of them that's when you have 60 okay so now we read the rest of the paragraph the PMOS capacitors are shown with VDD as their second terminal because the end well is usually tied to high however the behavior of the capacitor from a delay perspective is independent of the second terminal so long as it's constant hence we sometimes draw the second terminal as ground for convenience this is what i said here in ac vdd equals to ground the equivalent circuit for the logic gates are assembled from the indi individual transistors uh, figure 6 shows the equivalent circuit for a fan out of one inverter with negligible wire capacitance. The unit inverters of figure 4.6a are composed from the N MOS transistor of a unit size and a P MOS transistor of twice unit size. The unit inverters of, fig of figure 4.6 are composed of an N MOS transistor of unit size and a P MOS transistor of twice unit with to achieve equal rise and fall resistance. Figure 4.6b gives an equivalent circuit showing the first inverter driving the second inverted key. If the input A rises, the NMOS transistor will be on and the PMOS will be off. Figure 4.6c illustrates this case with the switches removed. The capacitors are shorted between two constant supplies are also removed because they are not charged or discharged. The total capacitance of the output is 6 